I've seen so many different things in the mail this past week uh, for Black Friday and this sale and that sale, and they've been preparing for weeks uh, to be able to capitalize on this moment that really should center around Jesus. And so just for a moment, just reflect. This is a season that we are all rejoicing in the fact that Jesus is coming. Amen? Amen. Jesus mm -hmm. is coming. With all the things that are going on, the sickness in the world, the jealousy in the world, the envy in the world, all the evil in the world, Jesus is coming. Ah, they say nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. We are not the first ones to be seeking and to be watching and to be waiting for Jesus. I want us to go back because they say every good story has a beginning. Let us go back, take a moment and scroll through memory lane in the Bible. If someone uh, having your writing, uh, your, your Bible or your, your, your technical device can find for yourself Malachi chapter four, Malachi chapter four. We're going to use just the last few words of the Old Testament to help us to better understand the Christmas story. Again, Malachi chapter four, Malachi chapter four. And if you are going there with us this morning, I'll be using the King James rendering as I do love uh, the depth of this particular reading or rendering, the way that it reads uh, on this text. Again, chapter four, Malachi, amen, amen. Starting at verse four, and it goes a little something like this. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. God's word for God's people. Amen. That's a tough Amen. way to end. That's the end of the Old Testament. That's the end of what leads us to Jesus' story. That's the end of uh, a long and treacherous history of Israel. And as I lead into this, I want you to take note, there's a couple of different things that help to make a story a good story. First, you got to understand the characters. You got to know who's involved. Who's in the story? I don't know if anybody uh, this past week got a chance to go and see the uh, the new uh, uh, Wakanda movie, Wakanda Forever. Great story. But if you didn't know the characters in the old one, the new one wouldn't make sense. Y'all don't get me this morning. Trying to take us someplace. That's the first thing. Second thing is you have to get a good setting. You got to understand the setting of of the story. The story has to have a set in a place to which people can draw some connection and, and some kind of uh, relevance uh, to their own lives. Then you have to have a plot. A plot. What's this thing all about? What's, what's really the story? What's the storyline? Then you transition to the conflict. There's always trouble. I don't know if anybody on the line knows that, but there's always trouble. If you live long enough, my grandmother used to say, if it hasn't rained in your life yet, child, wait a while. It's coming. It's coming. And then there is the resolution. You know, some people say the happy ever after. That, 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 that extra force, that's something that helps to bring it all together. That's the makings of a good story. Well, let's start off the characters. We see here in the Minor Prophets, Malachi helping uh, to paint a picture. Because for the next almost 400 years, 
it would appear that God goes silent. It appears that God stops speaking. It appears that God stops maneuvering through time and there's silence. Malachi sets the stage, letting us know that we are in almost the same position that we started out coming out of darkness. Because for four years, four, 400 years, the people would be without. They would be without hearing and uh, they would be without uh, uh, this, 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 what they would see as support. So they, many groans, many prayers, many, how long the night, Lord. I want y'all to think about where we are even in our storyline right now, the characters, and look about how, just like Rome, many who are in power, bearing down on those who believe. You see all kinds of things happening in our world. You see so many folks who are going through, who are suffering, when it seems like those who are doing wrong just keep elevating. Same thing here. When he wrote this, the children were being oppressed. They were being beaten down. Many violent protests, all kinds of evil happening. In that 400 years church, I don't know if many of us would have been able to make it. They didn't have the Christmas lights hopping up, uh, dropping up on Halloween night, people breaking out the trees. They didn't have uh, the sales and all the the, the Cinnamon in, 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 the, in the mall where you can go around and, and smell it. I smell Christmas. I, I hear Christmas. I, I see carols being sung. They didn't have that. The setting was one of hopelessness. People trying to understand, God, have you forgotten about us? Is this thing really going to happen? The setting uh, was bleak for many folk loss many felt uh, left and 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 lonely and as the story continues the plot being that uh the king Herod as we pick up right before Jesus's birth they're developing the world wants to block him out. They're designing a world that wanted to completely do away with him. If you read uh, the, the Apocrypha, you'll see uh, there was a time where they wanted to burn the scriptures, burn the Bible, get rid of this thing called uh, the way. Get rid of these, 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 these fictitious flights of fancy about this God that sits above it all. This, this, this God that, 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 that is going to provide for his people. This is how the plot began to develop. And the conflict, they'd been sacrificing. They tried various ways of connecting back with God and no one seemed to have the answers. No one seemed to understand the laws that Moses had enacted coming straight from God. They didn't quite understand how to love and how to forgive and how to treat one another. <laughs> but church, let me tell you, and I'm so glad this morning and we won't be long I'm so glad this morning that with all of the trouble and all the pain and all the time that it passed, in the beginning it said, out of the darkness, out of the darkness, he called the light. Church, out of 400 years, not hearing and not feeling anything out of 400 years of not believing i heard on one uh faithful night somebody said on one faithful night a child was brought into this world oh somebody said they saw a great light 
They saw a great light. And that light that they saw was the light of the world. The light that would shine bright enough that no matter who was lost and no matter how how much uh, pain was there, he could provide. He could bring it back together. Oh, it's not just the old Christmas story. Uh, these folks, unlike us, as I said, these all died, not having received the promises, but seeing them from afar, Hebrews 11. Many of them did not get to see what we see. Oh, this Christmas season, this Advent season, we ought to be joyous because we get to look back and know that Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died and rose. We get to see that. But in true Christmas story fashion, if we really dug down into the story, this thing started out as a bleak moment. Folk were trying to understand, God, if, have you forgotten us? Have you forsaken us? And on that Advent season, on that year's Christmas season, when folks started gathering, I heard somebody got happy when they heard that Mary was pregnant. Somebody was happy when they heard there was a virgin Pregnancy on the way. Somebody was happy that they heard, I heard that a Messiah is coming. And it got so good that the king, oh, the old king got afraid and said, wait a minute. I need somebody to go search this thing out. He was still some drama. He pulled up every child under the age of two. I want you to understand the first time, the first round, it wasn't like this. The first Advent season wasn't like this. You didn't have lights flickering. You didn't have sales. You didn't have any of that. It's a dark moment, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad the way this story ended. On that faithful night, a child was born. And that child was the savior of the whole world. It wasn't all for nothing. Yes, we may be going through some tough times. Yes, it may feel like we're at our wit's end. But at the end of it, Jesus was born. He was brought into this world. Jesus did come. It may seem like it's going to take a long time. It may sometimes feel like, God, I can't figure this thing out. I don't care how long the night. It says that he's always on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is came right at the right time. When he entered this old world of ours, it would have appeared like things were going to be over, but he came right at the right time where the church was frayed, where the community was on its, its last leg, where things seemingly would have been over. Here comes Jesus into this sin-sick world. He was born. He was born. He was born. A child was born that would save the world. Not just another Christmas story. I'm here to tell you this morning, and I don't know who may be listening to my voice. You may have felt like in your storyline that the characters may be different. You may not have it all. You may not be in the perfect quote unquote family, you may not be on the perfect block. I don't know where you may have started, but I'm here to tell you this morning, no matter what the characters around you may be saying or what it may look like, the setting here is, no matter how dark the night, he's still gonna come. No matter what's going on around you, he's still going to come. And the plot is that yes, you may have sinned. Yes, you may have fallen short, yes, you may have made some mistakes, but let me tell you, this conflict of Satan trying to separate you from who he is, he couldn't separate any of us. Through all the trouble, all the evil, all uh, the trials in this world, he could not separate us from Jesus. Yes. Jesus took it upon Amen. himself. He stepped out of his heavenly body. He stepped out of that heavenly throne, off that heavenly throne, and stepped down into our situation. That was the true plot twist when Satan thought he had us. 
Mm -hmm. The solution is Jesus. The solution this morning is Jesus. And because he was born, because he did live, and because he died and rose, as we open the altar, up for you. And I'm talking to whoever that is this morning who's not giving their life to him. This is your story now. He's here. He's available. This is your story now. This has become your story now because he's available to you. He did all of this for you. It may have started out bleak. It may have started out uh, dark and dreary. But he is the light, that greater light. He can provide that which will save a soul. And this morning, we open up the doors of the church. This is not just another Christmas story. This is now your story. He's here. He's available for you. This season, let's start it out. That's you giving your life to Christ. The door is open. If that is you, if you are tired of the story going in circles, you're tired of the cycles of going up and down, you're tired of feeling like, God, I, 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 I can't seem to get on track. This is now your chance. This is your chance. It's time to change the story. It's time to change the story right now. And you may feel like uh, you, you, because of your, 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 your character flaws that it's not possible. You may feel like because of the things around you, it's not possible. God, I, I'm too far gone. I, I, I don't come from the right place, the right side of the track. I can. I'm here to tell you right now. He's he, he, he's on the wide open. He's ready to accept you right here, right now. The door is open. If that is you this morning, very simple, very simple. You don't have to have the right words. You don't have to have a scripture on your mind. None of that. Right now, all we need you to do, and there's two ways, well, three ways to do this. You can text us at 864-201-3920. Again, 864-201-3920. To zero, or you can email us at Bethel Carlisle AME Church. I'm sorry, Bethel AME. I'm sorry, Bethel Carlisle AME at gmail.com. At gmail.com. My apologies. Again, that's 864 201 3920. Or you can email Bethel Carlisle AME at gmail.com. Simply the word found faith, found faith, or you can text the Zoom thread right here, the words found faith, and we'll know what you're talking about. And again, this is now your story. The important thing about this moment is this is now your story. Don't allow anyone to try to paint the picture or cause you to believe you're not a part of this story. When we say history, we're talking about his story, and his story includes you. This is not just another story. This is now your story. And so again, if that's you, we welcome you to the household of faith. If that is you, this moment is for you. Amen. Amen. Now, we also want to open up the opportunity for those who have not joined the church, who are not a part of a church family. We want to open up an opportunity for you to join us here at Bethel Carlisle AME Church. Now that is you, same phone number and same email address. Very simple words, very simple words. Found family, found family, found family. You can text those words either to 864-201-3920. Again, 864-201-3920. Or again, you can email us at the church's email. Simply the words, I'm sorry, uh, Bethel Carlisle AME at gmail.com. Simply the words, found family, found family. And if that is you, when you text that or email that, we'll know what you're talking about. And we can welcome you into joining this ministry. 